So topic four is about a foreign exchange market. So in this one, uh, we will study uh, two kinds of markets. Uh, forward markets, which is here, and sport markets. Uh, but before sport, and of course this sport markets is completely uh, full of uh, calculations. So calculations about exchange rates, which is sometime it's, it is complicated. So make sure you pay attention on this, uh, these things, all right? And then later on, uh, we will talk about the forward market. So forward market, normally we will study this market uh, through a diagram or through a graph. So with the help of graph, graph, we can easily estimate if we enter in a forward contract, we're gonna have a loss or profit in terms of uh, currency uh, 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 in investment, right? So let's start with the functions and the structure of uh, foreign exchange. So, but before that, uh, these are the some some um, some abbreviations of the currencies. So, just keep in your mind very common currencies. I guess we most likely to uh, use. We most likely to use for this class is mainly USD, Japanese yen, and uh, Canadian dollar and British pound. Right. So this mainly this four currency is quite common, but uh, Swiss francs and South African rand we may not gonna understand. It's just an example to to know that uh, instead of uh, in foreign exchange, instead of writing the full currencies, they are writing some abbreviations or the short form of the currencies. Right. So let's move on to the um, So let's move on to the, uh, can you see that? Yes. So uh, firstly, we, uh, we need to know what is the meaning of purchasing power. So purchasing power in simple words, purchasing power means what you can buy in a, what you can buy in your, currencies in one unit in a foreign country. That's the meaning of purchasing power. What, what you can buy, right? Uh, it's a processing from your currency gives you power to purchase goods and services produced in a foreign country. So if you go to America in 10,000 Vietnam dong or 20,000 Vietnam dong, what you can buy. So whatever you can buy, that's indicate the purchasing power of the, uh, of the currencies. Okay, uh, so that's, that's, um, that's quite obvious. What does it mean? It means uh, if you are a buyer or a seller, uh, you have to exchange uh, your local currency in a foreign currency if in foreign markets you wanna buy a foreign product. All right, so you have to convert it, you have to exchange. So in order to convert, you may be buyer or a seller. So maybe you can sell currencies or you can purchase currencies, right? So if you want to buy and sell currencies, then you have to enter in a foreign exchange market. We call it Forex. Right? So with the help of foreign exchange markets, uh, we can convert a foreign currency, uh, uh, currency in a uh, in, in local currency in a foreign currencies, right? And and Besides this, we normally do not convert local currency in a foreign currency from purchasing point of view. Sometimes we enter in a investment, right? In order to make money because foreign currencies fluctuate over the time, right? It's change probably 
I don't know, day to day, in day to day's activities, foreign exchange, uh, I mean, uh, foreign currency fluctuate. So investors make a benefits of that fluctuation. So maybe they buy and then they sell it. So maybe they have a profit. So idea is that we do not exchange only ex foreign currencies to measure your purchasing power, but we also exchange to invest in a foreign current uh, foreign currency to make some profit all right and we can make investment by doing many things like at foreign currencies foreign trade financing trading in foreign currency options future contract and so on right so all these kinds of contract we can enter in a various contract that you may study in topic five right but here you also study forward markets uh, i think they, they, they didn't mention here forwards markets uh, and and you entered in a contract that that help you to make profit all right so that's the main ideas for the foreign exchange and then we look at uh, the functions of the foreign exchange markets right. so you know the functions but there are we have a two participants one participants are wholesalers so mainly the banks or maybe some other financial institutions right they have a right to buy and sell and second one is the uh, clients market so clients market mainly the authorized dealer all right authorized dealer so like as in the previous example i gave example uh, of um, in the previous session, I give the example of uh, uh, two, two, two shops, foreign currency shops in Bitcoin market. So they are the authorized reseller or authorized seller of the foreign currencies because they have a, uh, they have a license. So we also call them dealers. Right? So these two are uh, the dealers. We also call them dealers. Both are dealers. Right, and the next thing that we studied in a previous session was a correspondent banking relations. So, what is correspondent banking relations? Correspondent banking relations means uh, banks they involve in a transaction. We call it interbanking system. One bank involved in transactions with other banks. So they exchange the transaction. That's called interbanking system. So under interbanking system, of course, banks not just only lend money to another bank. Bank also borrow from another bank. So lending and borrowing occur between these two banks. Right. So when it's time to pay or receive, instead of paying them, they will reduce their liability. That's come from them because you borrow from them. Um, here, here. So bank A and bank B. Bank A assets, bank A liability. Bank B assets, bank B liability. So remember, bank A liabilities, bank A liabilities means bank B assets, right? Because when bank A will borrow from bank B, so it means bank A liability increase. Same thing, bank B liabilities equals to bank A assets. So which means bank B borrow from bank A, right? So when time to return money back to bank B by the bank A, instead of paying them money, bank A will reduce the liability. That belongs to bank B. And bank B gonna do the same thing. When time to return money back to the A, they will reduce its liability, all right? Or when they when they borrow from bank, when they gonna lend money, so instead of giving them money, they will increase the assets, and obviously they will increase the liability. So this kind of system, it's called correspondent banking relationship. Instead of just making, giving or uh, 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 receiving, you just make changes in your balance sheet. All right, by increasing or decreasing your assets liability, but make sure that assets liability associated with this bank, because of course, normally financial transactions do not occur between two banks. I just give you example of these two banks, but in reality, 
the transaction occur between multiple banks. So when you increase or decrease liability, so you have to be understand this liability belongs to bank A or bank B or bank C or bank D, right? So that kind of system is called correspondent banking relationship, right? So this is some kinds of um, the timing for exchange rate. So it's just uh, don't, don't don't worry about it. The what time is open and closed? It's, it's not that that much important. So let's move uh, move on to the uh, forward market participants. In the previous sessions, we learned that uh, wholesalers, of course, they are mainly banks and clients uh, market or people they they have a license. We call them retailers. So of course. In foreign exchange market, majority of transactions occur through interbank markets, right? Which is 86%. Majority of transactions occur through, through the wholesalers. Whereas in client markets, just the rest, which is uh, around uh, 14%. So that's the participants of interbank. Next is a uh, commercial correspondent banking. I, I already gave you ideas for commercial banking. So just directly move to the uh, questions, which is one bank A is in London and bank A supply $200 to bank B, which is in New York. And in exchange of this bank B, which is in New York, transfer 100 um, million or 100 pounds to bank A, which is in London. So how are they gonna settle their accounts? Right. So bank, this is the assets and liabilities of two different banks, right? As I said, keep in your mind, as I said, the liability Remember, the liability of bank A is the assets of bank B, right? And liability of bank B is the assets of bank A, all right, that I mentioned you before, because they're lending borrowing with each other. So how are they gonna settle if they're gonna make transactions bank A and bank B? So let's say it says that it says that bank A buy 100 million pounds from bank B, all right? And bank B, which is in New York, of course, bank B, bank B will transfer dollars because in US and they will buy 100 pounds, all right? So bank A is buying pounds from bank B. Right. So how are they gonna adjust it? So bank A, which is in London, will transfer $200 million to bank B, and bank B will transfer 100 pounds to bank A, right? So now we, uh, we, 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 we adjust. So what does it mean? Bank A has some deposits in bank B, right? So bank, bank A has some deposits in bank B. So you can see that deposit bank B. So now what will happen? They will increase the deposits, right? Because of course they are receiving. So instead of, instead of receiving in terms of cash, they are depositing in bank A. So that means bank A, they will increase their assets, which is belongs to bank B, 100. And, or they will reduce the deposit, which is liability that you borrowed. So you can do either this or this. You can increase it, your assets, or you decrease your liability, which will become 100, right? Again, you can, now, this is about 
pounds, right? Pounds, you're buying pounds. Now here, you are supplying dollars, which is 200. So you are supplying dollars. Instead of supplying them, you increase your liability because you have to pay them. This is your obligations to pay 200 in exchange of 100 pounds, right? So you will, instead of literally giving them money, you will increase your liability, which means you are depositing in bank, deposited by bank B. So you increase liability, which is in dollars, right? And, or another option is you reduce your deposits because you have to pay them, pay to bank B, right? You need to pay bank B. First thing, you pay them, pay transfer, or whatever money you have deposited in bank B, you will reduce it. Same thing, right? So we are reducing. So 800 will become 600. So this is the transaction will be made in bank A, right? Either one or two. Now, bank B. Bank B will, so now what, what's going on bank B? Bank B is receiving, right? You are receiving. Receiving means your account is going to be credit, right? So credit means assets increased, right? So you increase the assets, right, which is here, or you decrease the liability, which is here, right? You increase the assets or you decrease the liability. Next is you are transferring to bank A. So this is your obligations to transfer to bank A. So your obligations, which means your liability increase by 100 because you are transferring 100, right? Or you are reducing your deposit that you are keeping in your bank A. Why? Because you have to reduce it. You have to pay them. So you said, okay, minus from my account. So same thing, whether I pay you or you minus from your account, right? So this is the ideas for a correspondent banking system. So make sure your balance should be in equal, all right? Balance equal means, remember, this transaction is in dollar, this is in pound, this is in pound, this is in pound. So make sure you convert all things in a pounds because London, their home currency is a pound. So London financial statement will be in pounds. So make sure whatever transactions you have in dollars, so using foreign exchange currencies that we're gonna study next using the sport markets, you, you have to convert, right? So make sure you, 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 you convert it at using exchange rate, right? So this is the ideas for correspondent banking system. So now the question is how we convert foreign currencies in a local currency or local currency in a foreign currency, right? That's, we gonna learn through the sport market, which is the today's lecture, right? So that's, that's the whole idea. And then this thing is the transferring money. How do we transfer money? Uh, international uh, foreign exchange uh, transfer from one country to another country through the banking transfer system. So you have a various options. One is a SWIFT, SWIFT account or SWIFT code, which stands for Society of Worldwide Interbanking Financial Telecommunications. And uh, second one is a CHIPS, CHIPS mainly basically Fed wires, uh, which means they are normally transfer the checks when you are transferring checks one international banks to another international banks. And third one is a uh, ECHO. That's mainly used for foreign exchange, Forex. This is for Forex, Forex transactions. So they, this is the clearing house. So we, I, I gave example of the clearing house in the last uh, sessions. Right? So that's, that's all about uh, last session, I guess. Yes, so that's all about last session. So last session, we stop here at uh, correspondent uh, banking relations.
so let's uh, start with the spot market so i repeat again we will study foreign exchange markets we will study this foreign exchange using two markets spot markets and forward market sport the meaning of sport means right now whatever price is available right now we use this price to make transaction that's the meaning of sport markets sport means on the spot so use on the spot price Price means price of foreign currencies to make transactions. To make transactions. Right. So that's the meaning of sport market. Whatever is the price available in a market, we use that price to make a transaction. Transaction means convert money, maybe pounds to dollar, dollar to pound, or dollar to euro, or pounds to euro. All right. So that's called a sport market forward market that's the second type of market that we will study later uh, under forward markets you do not use the spot price because under forward market you will enter in a particular contract all right after entering the the the, the contract you bypass the forward price all right so which means you don't have to pay whatever price is available in the market you will pay the price that you used it to sign the contract all right and if sport market increase or decrease that will help you to decide you have a profit or loss using the the, the price that you use to make your contract so that's forward so in, in the forward we bypass uh, this sport price all right so let's start with this so sport price is just whatever price available we use it to 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 make transactions that's the meaning of sport price all right Okay, so uh, sport pride markets involve almost immediate, immediate purchase or sales. Immediate means on the spot, all right? Immediate purchase or sale of foreign exchange. Typically cash settlement is made to business day. We call it T2, T2. T2 means it takes two days to make transaction for example let me give you a very quick example uh, what does it mean uh, settlement made in two business days do you know what does it mean settlement made in two business days you know what is no. it no? so for example you have a two bank bank a i'm giving example of bank right, so it's easy to understand bank b so for example you transfer money from bank a to bank b when you transfer money if both banks are different this is a and this is b right so if banks are not same it takes around 24 hours to get money so this is called settlement period is a t1 one day all right so transaction will be completed in one day completed means i transfer and you receive when you receive transaction complete all right but if this is on the way that transition known as incomplete transactions, all right? So in cash settlement, when you, cash settlement means sport market or cash markets, it takes normally two business days. It takes two days to convert currencies if you are making a transaction using these markets, foreign currency transaction. That's the meaning of settlement, two business days. Take two days to, to get money. But these two days is between these two days between usd and non north american currency any currencies between usd and non north american non north american means maybe not um uh, not of course mexico pesos like as they mentioned if something is not mexico peso and us that means settlement will take two days 
all right? Whatever country comes under North American currencies. If transactions between USD and North American currencies could be Mexican peso or AUD, Australian dollars, all right? So that will take a one business day, all right? It will be faster if it's North American. They, they, they maybe they have a contract or they have a territories to decide that these countries currencies um, actually it depends sometimes it is not just strictly that only North American currencies why they choose North why they choose North American currencies because it's first of all it's next to US there are lots of import export transactions occur between US and those kinds of countries all right in order to provide much more convenient to the investors in terms of getting or paying money so that's why they decided transaction day is one faster fast transaction so uh, so more import and export gonna be much more convenient and more investment opportunities will arise so they're not gonna face any kinds of foreign currencies uh, payments delay all right because transaction gonna happen in, in I guess I don't know thousands of millions of dollars right so every day is very important so that's by that reason they reduce from t2 to t1 but if it's us and non north americans could be J could be japan it could be russia so it could be uh, new zealand i don't know so that's will take two days to uh, transactions period so this is the ideas for transaction time for spot market so let's move on to the how we can exchange the currencies right so we have a five different way first with the help of spot rate quotations and then cross exchange bid and ask spot fx trading foreign exchange trading and cross rates all these five types of uh, components of sport uh, sport markets we have so in order to understand sport markets we have to go through with the all these five types of components one by one we will study so your calculation starts from uh, sport rate quotations so let's start with the sport rate quotation so I repeat again what we are doing here we are measuring how local currencies could be converted in a foreign currencies or foreign currencies could be converted in a local currencies using sport market where price are immediate available price available on the sport whatever is a market price you use it to convert transactions right okay so as you know that uh, from the previous uh, some sessions uh, you study that two currencies whatever we have studied many uh, many uh, up and downs in a foreign currencies in topic uh, topic uh, topic two topic two many up and downs in a foreign currencies mm. so the conclusion was there was a two major currencies exist in a in our economy one is a USD which is American from America and second one is euro from euro right so so what we have learned from the from the previous uh, topic two we learned that uh, there are mainly two major currencies that's most of world currencies transaction involved in these two currencies us and america so in foreign exchange markets we use the base of us currency we call it american terms and uh european currencies we call it european terms so we use these two terms in in simple words we use this base to transfer currency one country to another country for example if transaction is occurring between australia and vietnam so what we're going to do australia to usd australian dollars to usd usd to vietnam dollar right so that's the meaning of american terms so we can use as a base that help us to convert one currencies to another currencies and this currency is to the final currency so we use the base so that's the meaning of terms that we're going to look later so now <clears throat> what is sport rate quotations so that is the first uh, components of sport markets sport rate quotation 
half of Spot rate quotations have what quotation means the price, the the the, uh, the, the value, right? Uh, yes, the, the the value. For example, one dollar equals to twenty five thousand Vietnamese quotations, right? That's the meaning of quotations. Okay, so direct. Quotations means when you convert foreign currency into USD, which means one Japanese yen equals to how many dollars, All right? One Japanese yen equals to how many dollars? That's called a direct quotations. Foreign currencies into uh, USD, for example, one Vietnam dong equals to how many dollars? One Vietnam dong equals to how many dollars? That's called direct quotations. Indirect quotation means when USD in foreign currencies. This is called indirect quotation. For example, you want to know what is the value of one euro in Vietnam. This is called indirect quotations, if we are using European terms. Or what is the value of one dollar in Vietnam, which is, I guess, let's say 25,000 Vietnam dong, all right? So this is called indirect quotation. So remember, direct and indirect quotation. You understand direct and indirect so is much more easier for you when we later go on the calculation. So is it okay, direct, indirect? So I repeat. Direct quotation means uh, what is the value of one dong in US? What you can buy, how much, how many USD you will get it in, in one dong, right? This is called direct quotations. Indirect quotation means how much money you will get it if you convert dollar into, um, into Vietnam dong. Right, so as I said here, okay. So that's the meaning of direct and indirect quotation. Okay. Now, most currencies in interbank markets are quoted in European terms. Like as I explained to you before, most of currencies quoted in European terms means we are using euro to measure the value of that currency. So for example, one euro equals to how many Vietnam dollars? So in, in the interbank transaction, euro, uh, European terms, that's the meaning of European terms, right? Not American terms, but we have American terms and European terms. American terms means value of your currencies in American dollar, this is called American terms, and the value of your currencies in a, maybe European currencies, that's called Euro terms. Remember, American terms, value of your currencies in USD, American terms, and the value of your currencies, your local currencies, you're not from America, you're not from, if America, of course, it will be one, if you're from Europe, or pound, it will be one. But if any other foreign countries, according to European terms, the value of your currencies in Euro, pounds, or other European currencies, All right? So let's have a look at the examples of American and European uh, terms and make sure you understand it. So this is when you go to the banks. I don't know, have you ever seen 
the quotations, the prices of foreign exchange in a bank. But when you next time when you go there, you check, it shows something like this, right? So look, here, this is currencies in US per US. So what does it mean? What does it mean? Canadian dollar 0.9984. All right. So what does it mean? The value of one Canadian dollars equals to no value of one USD value of one USD equals to point nine nine eight four dollars that's the meaning of this that's the meaning of this the value of one canadian dollars okay so the value of one canadian dollars equals to 0 0.9984 that's the meaning of in usd right Per USD means the value of one Canadian dollars equals to 1.0 value of, I repeat, value of one Canadian dollars equals to 1.0016 USD and the value of one USD equals to 0.9984 dollars. So make sure you understand, don't be confused in USD per USD, I repeat, in USD means the value of one Canadian dollars equals to 0.9984 dollars. And value of one USD equals to 1.0016 Canadian dollars. Right? In America, the value of one Canadian dollars is equal to 1.0016. I mean, in, 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 in in Canada, value of one USD equals to 1.0016 Canadian dollars. Okay, so now here, this is forward, forward, forward. Is this one more relate to the forward markets, right? That you will study later. This is the spot markets. Right? This is forward market price that you look later. Now, Japanese yen, right? The value of one Japanese yen equals to 0 0.009 USD and one USD equals to 108.46 Japanese yen. If you have a USD, you want to convert in Japanese yen, you get this money. If you have Japanese yen, one yen, you want to convert in USD, you get this price, right? So this is sport price and this is your forward price, right? Next, next is a uh, euro in US per US, right? The value of one euro equals to one point four seven four four dollars, and value of one dollar equals to point four seven eight three euro, right? So the value of one USD, all right, and the value of one euro in USD, right? And this is again forward markets, one month, three months, six months. And here is your pounds. The value of one uh, dollars, yeah, value of one dollar equals to 1.97 pounds right and the value of one pound equals to 0 0.5072 dollars right so this is basically quotations right now this is direct quotations indirect quotation if you go back to the previous slide here Direct quotation means one yen, how many dollars, right? 
So one yen equals to point zero zero nine two two zero dollars. All right. So this is a direct quotation. This is indirect quotation. Same thing here. In US direct quotation per US indirect quotations. All right. So if you are in Vietnam, so normally you will look um, uh, indirect quotations right, to convert your one USD into a Vietnam dong. Right, so you will get that's Vietnam dong. If it is Vietnam dong here. Okay. So from US perspective, from US perspective, data quotation is American terms. From European perspective, data quotation is European terms. All right. Remember, from US perspective, data quotation is a American terms. From European uh, perspective, data quotation is a European terms. All right. So from your perspective, Vietnam Dong is a data quotation. Okay. Now, so this is just ideas that I already explained you, which means the direct quotations for pounds is one pounds equals to $1.9717 in dollar. The value of the value of one pound in dollars. All right. And value of uh, pounds per US. So indirect quotation means the value of 0 0.5072 equals to one USD. So you can see one pound USD, pound USD. So this is direct quotations. This is indirect quotations, All right? So we have a way to write direct and indirect quotations. Right, so the way to write direct quotation is I can explain you now if this is working. Right. So you can write pound divided by dollars or dollars divided by pounds. This is direct quotations, dollar divided by pounds. And this is indirect quotation that you will see in the next slide, All right? That, I'm just giving you quick ideas because you, you're gonna have a look. Okay. Note that direct quote is reciprocal of indirect quote. Remember, direct quote is a reciprocal of indirect. Direct code is 1.9717. This is direct code, all right? Direct code. Reciprocal means one divided by 1.9717. That will be equals to, I guess this number. That's the meaning of reciprocal we are dividing right so you can see that one point as i said 1.9717 equals to one divide if you one divided by 1.9717 it will be this that's obviously that's obviously all right so every time if you need a, a indirect if you have only direct quotations and you need indirect quotation value so you simply divide it one divided by it's, it's quite obviously that that's normally we, we we do in in mathematics or like for example um one dollar equals to twenty five thousand vietnam dong all right one dollar equals to so one dollar equals to twenty five thousand vietnam dong and how much is one Vietnam dong equals to dollars? So one divided by 25,000, all right? That's the meaning of reciprocal. That's the meaning of 
reciprocal. So remember, indirect quotation is your reciprocal. All right? Yes or no? Is it okay? Is it clear? Say something. Yes. Okay. So make sure you understand very clear. Don't be confused. Direct, indirect quotations. Don't be confused in reciprocal. Don't be confused, especially about this. In USD, per USD. Otherwise, you have to go back to this slide when you're going to calculate and say, oh, what does it mean in USD per USD? What does it mean this number? Because now it's very clear. I'm writing here in USD per USD. But in your question, you're just going to see these two numbers. And by showing you euro, right? Then you have to find what does it mean 1.4744? What does it mean? All right? It means one euro equals to 1.4744 dollars or, or uh, uh, the value of one dollar equals to 0.6782 euro, right? So make sure you, 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 you don't be confused in this direct and indirect quotation. So this is direct quotation. This side is a direct quotation and this side is indirect quotations, right? So indirect quotation is a reciprocal of direct quotations. If you, uh, one divided by, one divided by this is this, one divided by this is this, one divided by this is this. All right, so it's, it's obviously, I guess I give example of Vietnam dong to USD or USD to Vietnam dong. All right, so let's uh, move on. Let's move on. Any questions or move on? Move on. So same thing, like as I mentioned, one divided by 1.97 is the reciprocal. If you wanna get this quotations, then you use this divided by this, right? Or this quotation, this divided by this. Okay, so now this is the ideas of sport rate quotations. So let's go back and check sport rate quotations here. Sport rate quotation is finished. All right? Sport rate quotation is finished. So let me write down for you the conclusion of sport rate quotations. So conclusion of sport rate quotations. So sport rate quotation. So what is the conclusion of sport rate quotation? What did we learn in sport rate quotation? We learn about direct quotations, direct quotations, and indirect quotations. Direct quotation means value of one Vietnam dong in one USD. This is called direct quotations. Value of one Vietnam dong in a USD. Right? You can write like this if you want. Dollar divided by Vietnam dong. You can also write like this is the way to write these quotations. But we will, let, we will have a look in the next part. Indirect quotation means one USD equals to one Vietnam dong. All right. So this is called indirect quotations. All right. So remember. Uh, in America, direct quotation is in American terms, right? In US, direct quotation is a American terms, right? Is an American terms. Okay, 
So this is the thing that you have to remember. And another thing is uh, how to read. So make sure um, how to read quotations. How to read quotations. So let's say uh, one pound equals to, I don't know, point six seven one eight dollars all right so make sure you know the reading of uh, quotations or one usd uh, one do one dollars equals to one divided by point six seven one eight pound all right so the conclusion is direct quotation is a reciprocal so direct quotation uh, sorry indirect quotations indirect quotation is a reciprocal of a direct quotations right indirect quotation is a reciprocal of direct quotation. Reciprocal means that's what we are doing here, right? So this is the conclusion of sport trade and make sure you remember that direct and indirect quotations, right? So let's move on to the next. So this is sport trade quotations. This is one. Okay, so let's move on to the second one. Second one is a cross exchange rate quotation. So as you can see, cross exchange rates. Cross exchange rate means change the uh, pound to USD, USD to Vietnam dollar. This is called cross. So you are converting pound into Vietnam dollar. So pound to USD, USD to Vietnam Dong. So this is called cross exchange rate quotation. So let's have a look, cross exchange rate quotations. Here is a cross exchange rate quotations. So a cross, A cross exchange rate quotation is an exchange rate between a currency pair where neither currency is a USD, like it's pound and Vietnam dong. You want to convert pound into Vietnam dong. So this is the example of cross exchange rate quotation. Neither currencies uh, is in dollars, all right? No dollar exists. That's called a cross exchange. For example, you are in you are in England. You have one with uh, one thousand pound. Now you come to Vietnam. You want to convert your pound to Vietnam dong. This is example that you are converting your pound to Vietnam dong. Then you are using a cross trade exchange quotations. All right, because yeah, I mean, or maybe you are in a foreign country, so you are using cross exchange rate quotations to convert your pound to. Vietnam dong. So none of currencies is in USD. The cross exchange rate can be calculated from USD exchange rate from two currencies use, using either American terms, using American terms, or using European terms. We can choose whatever options uh, we like it, right? So in American, so as you can see, Euro and pounds so dollars so remember this this and this this is 1.9717 and this is 
seven four four and then if you convert it then you will get this number in a pound right okay so what does it mean what does it mean it means one dollar it means one dollar equals to 1.9717 pound that's the meaning of this All right and what does it mean this it means one dollar equals to 1.4744 euro. All right, so what we are doing here, we have currencies, we are converting into pounds, right? Or we are dividing your dollar into euro, so we got, so what does it mean? It means we have pounds we are converting in a dollar by doing this by doing this all right so which means now we got in dollar and then doing this doing this dollar into a euro you can say that all right so this is called a currency exchange rate cross currency exchange rate so now as a result we are converting pounds into euro now what does it mean what does it mean it means one euro one one euro equals to 1.3372 pounds. That's the meaning of this. All right, so that's what we are estimating. So with the help of this American terms, with the help of this American terms, we can convert any currencies, we can estimate any currency's value. For example, with the help of American terms, you can estimate the value of, uh, you can convert uh, Vietnam Dong in uh, Korean won. You can, you can find exactly estimated price by following this formula or by following this American quotations. So this is the ideas for it, All right? Now, you can do the same thing doing uh, European terms, but remember, now European terms, all right, European terms means a indirect quotation from American terms point of view. So what do you have to do? You have to one divide by 1.9717 and one divide by 1.4744. That's the meaning of European terms. Remember, in USD, in America, USD is American terms. In Europe, Euro, Euro is American terms. But in America, indirect quotation is a European terms, all right? In Europe, all right, indirect quotation is an American terms. Let me write down if you do not remember that. So let me write here. Um, so, in US, direct quotation is an American terms, is an American terms. Right. And in direct quotation, and in US, direct quotation is an American terms, and in US, Indirect quotation is European terms. 
remember that, right? And in Europe, in Europe, in Europe, direct quotation is Euro, European terms. And in Europe, indirect quotation is a American terms. American terms. So make sure you remember that. I can ask you this question in your exam. Of course, anything I can ask in your exam. But make sure it's clear. If you remember that, it's much more easier for your future calculations. Right? So let's move on. To the next. Is it okay? In US, direct quotation is American terms, and in US, indirect quotation is European terms. Yes or no? Say something. Is it okay? Yes. Okay. So let's. Continue. Okay. So the same thing. Alternative expression is the easier of things of cross exchange rate calculated as product of American terms and European terms rather than quotations of American terms and the European terms. So make sure you, you, you remember that. All right. So one country. Uh, direct quotation is another country in direct quotation, obviously. Now, so that's the conclusion of cross exchange rate. So let me write down conclusion of cross exchange rate. So cross exchange rate, so number two. cross exchange rate under cross exchange rate normally what we do when both currencies are non usd neither of currencies is a usd so what we're going to do we will use usd to euro all right so first of all we convert we convert one currencies in usd and then usd to euro but we do this one as the american terms american terms but for example if you want to follow european terms if you want to follow european terms then you don't have to exchange or cross exchange rate. You don't need to do that. Why? Because under European terms, direct quotation is a Euro and American is an indirect quotation. So we are not using indirect quotation. We are using direct quotation since uh, we are in Europe. So then you will directly, you will directly convert in Euro using European terms. Using European terms, you can direct convert into Euro but is in Euro. So now the question is why we have to do that. Sometime, like as uh, Japanese yen to Korean won. So let's say Korean won. So none of these currencies is in uh, US. So if you use American terms, use a USD as a base or European terms as a Euro as a base. So in both cases, you have to convert. So better use American terms. Why not, why not European? Because European is a little bit complicated compared to the European terms, uh, compared to the American terms. So then you will convert yen to USD and USD to Korean won. And you have, of course, you have exchange rate, all right? So this is the conclusion of this uh, cross exchange rates. Right? So you can use, right. 
Of course, this one also conclusion that one country uh, direct quotation, if direct quotation is American, European is the indirect, according to uh, America. In, according to Europe, America is the indirect quotation. So, all right. So this is the ideas for your cross exchange rate quotations. All right. So let's move on to the next. Okay. So now the next uh, is the bid and ask spread, All right? Bid and ask spread. So bid and ask spread means the difference between bid and ask. And of course, the difference between bid and ask will be your profit. All right. So now what is bid and ask? So we use the word bid and ask uh, in order to trade in foreign currencies. All right. Uh, bidding and asking. Uh, the when you buy something, when you buy the word bid, Okay, so bid, then the dealer pay the price to buy. For example, dealer means banks. You go to bank, right? And you wanna sell your USD, all right? So bank gonna offer you a bid price. So means bid means the price trader pay to buy. So in simple language, bid means buying price, right? Remember for, for one person, it's a bid price. For another person, it's a ask price. Of course, buying price for buyer is a selling price for the seller. So bid means buy. Ask means sell. All right, I repeat, bid is buy, bidding price, buying price, at the price you are willing to buy foreign currency. This is called bid price. And ask price, the price buyer, I mean, buyer, you want buyer pay for, or the price you wanna get it to sell your currencies. That's called a selling. Ask, sell, bid, buy. Obviously, ask price is higher than the bid price. If ask price is a lower, trader or dealer not gonna make profit. So it's all the time, selling price, ask price is higher, all right? Okay, so the difference between bid and ask, it's your profit. This is called bid and ask spread, all right? The difference between bid and ask, it's your profit. Right. So here we, will, we may not discuss about the profit, but we just discuss about uh, how to use bid price and ask price, all right? Uh, okay. I quickly remind you direct and indirect quotations, all right? So remember, reciprocal of direct quotations will be indirect quotations, right? Or reciprocal of indirect quotations will be direct quotation. So direct quotation, equals to one divided by direct quotation will be indirect quotations, equal, all right? I repeat, direct quotation equals to one divided by direct quotation will be indirect quotation because reciprocal of direct quotation is a indirect quotation that I mentioned you earlier, 
All right? So you remember this thing because in your bid and ask spread, uh, bid and ask spread, American terms bid and European terms ask is the same. All right? So I will come back to this point later. So let's uh, look more here. So here, the bid price is the price dealer is willing to pay you for something. Make sure you understand. Dealer is willing to pay you for something. So dealer is a buyer. All right. Ask price is the price that dealer want you to pay for the thing. So dealer is a seller, All right? Dealer is a bank. So remember, in you keep yourself as a dealer, All right? Make sure you treat yourself as a dealer. All right, because you could be either banks to exchange currencies or you could be a, a authorized, uh, authorized um, reseller or authorized seller, like as the Bintan market. So anybody you could be, right? So make sure you understand bid price is the price a dealer is willing to pay you, all right? Willing to pay me, all right? So it means dealer is a buyer, I'm a seller. Right? So if I go to bank and the ask price is the amount the dealer wants you to pay for the thing all right so which means i'm seller it doesn't matter we are talking use car or use currency bid and ask spread is the difference between bid and ask price all right so of course uh, currencies are unlike some other things like as the car right? because car values change all right but doesn't really matters it's all about the difference between bid price and ask price the making the difference between bid price and ask price the trader bankers dealer authorized sellers they make money right that by finding the difference between this bid and ask this is called bid and ask spread they make a profit if more difference more profit of course and obviously your ask price is higher than the bid price right okay uh i think we we go for break now all right and after break, we will do some calculations for uh, bid and ask spread. Right? So before we go for break, anybody has any question? So no questions, so we go for a break and then we will discuss. Right. So under bid and ask price, a bid and ask spread, as you mentioned, that uh, we have a two price, one price for uh, buying, one price for buying, so which is buy price, and one price for sell. And here we are calculating spread, of course, which is the profit. We're going to calculate in form of percentage, how many percent? So the way to calculate the bid and ask spread in percentage, we call it percent spread, which is ask price minus bid price divided by ask price. All right. So this is going to be 0.0339%. So this is basically in other words, you can say that that's the expected profit we have whenever we enter in any kinds of uh, trading activity related to foreign exchange, All right? 
So this is the bid and ask spread. So let's move on to uh, more about uh, bid and ask spread using uh, American uh, American terms, right? American terms and the European terms. <clears throat> so, so remember, nearly this number first two decimals are nearly same. We call it big figures. Yeah. These are known as big figures. So remember, this is bid and ask and bid and ask. Right. So it's a big figure. We call it big figure. And, and these are at the end, these are the small figures, all right? Small figure and big figure. So small figure are the difference of the bid and ask spread, but big figures are nearly same, right? Most of the time, big figures, by looking at big figures, we do not understand is the big bid price or ask price. But by looking at the small figures, we can find the difference between bid and ask spread, all right? So as I said, this is big figure, 1.97. And the last two digits are the, after decimals, the last two digits are the small figures. Okay, and one thing which is really important, remember, as I explained to you before, but I repeat again, this and this, which means American bid, it equals to the European ask, if you reciprocal that, All right? I repeat, if you reciprocal. Yes. So remember, 1.9712. Remember this one? It's a direct quotations. All right, it will be equals to indirect quotation, which means if you reciprocal direct quotation, that will be equals to, which will be 0 0.5073, all right? So that's why this number is equal, so remember, American bid equals to European ask. Why? Because as we looked before, American is a direct quotations, European is a indirect quotations, all right? Now the question is why, why American ask equals to this? Why not American bid equals to this? Obviously. So, obviously, that If you are a buyer of one country, that means another person is a seller of another country, all right? So by that reasons, by that reason, we are using ask for indirect quotations and bid for indirect quotations. That's the reason we are matching direct I mean, direct quotation bid equals to indirect quotation of, of ask, right? So that's the, the, the important thing, right? 
So same thing, this slide explained. American terms, which is 1.972, it's equals to us. Notice that reciprocal of this equals to reciprocal of this. Now, what does it mean? Can you explain to me? What does it mean? Dollar pounds. Anybody knows? If I write 1.9712, what does it mean? Dollar divided by pound. Tell me. I think it means that uh, one dollar equals 1.9712 pounds. Yes, it means one dollar. So remember the meaning of this dollar divided by pound. So one dollar equals to 1.97 pound. All right. Same thing here. All right. So which means one pound equals to one pound equals to 0 0.5073 dollars right one pound equals to 0 0.5073 dollars right so that's the ideas of, of this these two now let's move on to the more calculations so that's more uh, practical examples of uh, using currencies a speculator is an investor in new york want to take ten thousand dollars position in pound so which means someone who has ten thousand dollars in us which is in us currency and he wanna convert into pounds right after his trade what will be his position? So this is the value of a currency, bid and ask. All right. So can you calculate for me and tell me how much it will be? If you want to convert this $10,000 in pound, what will be the value? I think he'll get 5,072 pounds. 5,072 pounds. Oh, yeah. 5,071 pounds. Not two. You are not selling your pounds. You are a buying pounds. All right? You are about buying pounds. So let me explain to you. So that's, this is the answer. All right. So let me explain you. So by looking at these figures, by looking at these, uh, figures, you can understand this is the buying and selling price. So one dollar pounds, pounds, dollar. Dollar pounds means one dollar, uh, one pounds will be 
equals to one dollar this is american terms remember this is american terms and this is european terms right american terms and european terms now you have usd right so you have to convert into a pound so dealer will pay 1.971 dollar for one pound and he's asking 1.9720 for selling i mean i mean uh, yeah selling and here what does it mean it means uh one pounds will be equals to 0.5071 dollars so now what you are doing here you have you have dollar right you have dollar so you have to buy pounds all right you have a dollars you have to buy pounds so buy pounds you have two option option one option one you use american terms option one you use american terms this is all right option two you use european terms all right european terms all right so if you want to use european terms you have to reciprocal american terms right. reciprocal american terms american terms what do you have to do you have to sell usd according to american terms i repeat according to american terms in this question you can sell usd all right option one you, you sell it of course you got pounds because this is exchange rate for pounds all right sell it exchange rate pound option two is you buy pounds option one you sell it usd all right you sell it usd because you have ten thousand pounds you want to ten thousand dollars you want in pounds you want in pounds so you can do first option but of course it's a indirect quotation so you gonna reciprocal your ask price so they are doing the same thing first option is they're gonna reciprocal reciprocal you're gonna sell it this is the selling second option is you buy so easiest way this multiply by directly this right because you are buying you have dollars you're gonna buy pounds so this is the good thing if in the question you have american and european terms so my suggestion so the quick conclusion here so let me give you a uh, uh, quick uh, ideas to convert is, is my suggestions so for example if you want convert in foreign currency foreign currency foreign currency means non-us if you want to convert in a foreign currency simple use european terms you don't have to reciprocal issues you want to convert in foreign currency you want to buy foreign currency you use bid price of european terms if you want to sell you ask price but if you want one option is this second option is this you use american terms but again you have to you have to 
reciprocal. Reciprocal. So the questions that I show you in your slides, they have they did the same thing. They reciprocal. 1.97, I don't know, maybe two zero, I guess. Right? They reciprocal. Or you don't need to do that. You simply use the European terms. All right? Simply use the European term. So remember, uh, American terms and European terms. Bid, ask, bid, ask. So remember, I write equal. American bid equals to European ask. European bid equals to American ask. So that's why I'm writing here, or, or. So you are here, you are using ask because you wanna sell USD, all right? Or you will use bid. Why? Because you wanna buy. So it's the exactly same thing. American, ask, which is here, European bid. So this is the question, right? In this question, we did the same thing, right? So don't be confused about this bid and ask. Most of students, they get confused. So remember, one country bid, another country ask. One, one term bid, another term ask, all right? So let's go back to the slides and check again. So we did exactly the same thing. You can do either it, this and this same. All right. Reciprocal of this will be equals to 0 0.5071. All right. Is it okay? Yes. Okay, so move on to the next. So remember this type of questions you're going to see in your uh, exam. Next, another question. A businessman has just completed transaction in Italy and England. So he's now holding 250 euro and 500 pounds. So he wanna convert to USD. So he wanna convert euro to USD and pound to USD. So total how much he will get it. Right. So his currency dealer provide this quotations. So this is the quotations for pound. So pound and Pound USD. All right. So this is the quotation bid and ask pound USD and USD euro. All right. So can you tell me this one? Is it American terms or European terms? This one. GPP divided by USD. Is it American terms or European terms? I think it's American term. No, it's a European terms. This is American terms. Go back and check how American terms look alike. See, can you see that? Can you see that? This is American terms, under American terms. So on American terms, USD will be in the front. USD divided by foreign currency, under American terms, remember, I repeat, under American terms, USD divided by foreign currency. Under European terms, 
foreign currency divided by USD or divided by others. But, but in American currency, USD will be a numerator and foreign currency will be denominator. In European, local currency, numerator and foreign currency, denominator. In Europe, dollar is a foreign currency, right? European is a local currency. In America, American is a local currency. That's why direct quotations, right? So this is, according to America, indirect. According to Europe, indirect, right? Yes or no? So remember, American terms, dollar will be higher, right? Understand, yes or no? Say something? Yes. Okay, so let's move on. So don't be confused. So here is the question here, is a question. So, so remember, I repeat, this is European terms, all right? And this is American terms. So quickly, I show you before uh, it's to uh, record this one. So let me explain again so you can find again in the recording sessions, recording one. So I repeat again uh, because I forgot before in your uh, record. So this is your this is your European terms. This is your American terms. If it's in European terms and you want your position in, if you want your position in USD, then you have to, you have to reciprocal your indirect quotations to direct because reciprocal direct is equals to indirect quotation or reciprocal indirect quotation equals to direct quotation that we looked before. Okay. If you have American terms, like as here, and you want your position in American terms, then of course you don't have to do reciprocal because American terms means direct quotation, but European terms means indirect quotation. So European terms means you have to convert indirect quotation into direct, direct quotation with the help of reciprocal, which is one divided by indirect. So one divided by indirect will be equals to direct quotation. But if you have American terms, then you have a direct quotation, so it's okay, you use direct quotation. You don't have to reciprocal it, right? And, but again, be careful with your bid and ask spread for your European terms and the American terms. If you, you understand this, keep in your mind, that question is easy. Finish? Finish, yes or no? So USD to Euro, okay, is equals to three six, three six eight four, yes, that's right. This answer is correct. Right. So for for euro, if you convert your euro, which is which is your two hundred and fifty thousand euro, if you convert two hundred fifty thousand euro, you will use exchange rate this. Why? Again, you this is for American terms. Buy American terms. Direct quotation. So what you are doing here? Two fifty thousand euro. So you have to buy. USD, all right, or, or second option is you will give me here European terms in direct quotation for Euro, which means Euro divided by USD. So you reciprocal this and this, but again, you don't have to do, if you do not have European terms given only American terms, just use it American terms. So here only American terms is given. So we are buying USD. So we have 250,000 euro, we are buying USD. So 250,000 multiplied by 1.4739.
that's why we got three six eight four seven five so three six eight four seven five okay so that's for here now for this now you have pounds so now you are selling pounds right you are selling pounds but again this one is your european terms which means indirect quotation so you have to reciprocal all right so you're gonna reciprocal one divided by 0 0.5076 all right multiply by 500,000 yes uh, so Nguyen Thao she gave me answer which is correct nine eight five zero two eight dollars yeah. dollars so you're gonna get these two money all right so let's have a look uh the answer in the next slide you don't have this slide here when he sells two hundred and fifty thousand, he will trade with the dealer at dealer bid price one four seven three nine per euro all right so that's why that's why you are simply multiplied by this just ignore this sign to keep it simple you don't worry about it you don't understand so this multiplied by this so you got this number all right and you're gonna reciprocal you're gonna reciprocal with if you do that you will got direct quotation all right that's that information will give you direct quotation the so 500,000 multiplied by direct quotation is 9850288 so you got these two numbers whatever is the total all right so this is your ideas to convert uh, your convert your currencies right so total is one three five three five oh two point five eight right so there's the idea so you don't have this slide so you make sure you take a picture of, of, of this slide it's very important right. so that's all for uh, your cross i guess it's cross cross yeah no sorry bid and ask spread so that's all for bid and ask spread so bid and ask spread is finished all right so any questions for bid and ask spread is it clear for you yes so all good all clear yes all clear okay so we stop here for bid and ask spread so next class we will start with your uh for your cross rate all right cross rate so but make sure cross rate gonna be more complicated using bid and ask spread so make sure you really understand bid and ask spread so make sure you read this bid and ask spread again at home and in your textbooks you have some questions if you want you can practice those questions about bid and ask spread let me show you uh, some examples some solved examples maybe you need a solution for practice question if you have a look but i don't think so you're gonna have solution for it no you don't have a solution i also don't have solution for this one i will check if i have a solution for this textbook but anyway but again you can see some uh, some questions uh, if you have a look um, page number one to one of your textbook All right one to one one to two on these two uh, pages the good explanations of your bid and ask spread is given so that's not gonna confuse you if you are one, one page number 120 also about quotations cross exchange rate quotation you can have a look but mainly one 
two one and one two two. They explain uh, good, but different questions. So if you want, you can have a look. And if you want to practice, then you have uh, some questions. So let me check. You can do that questions, and I can check later. Um, questions number nine, page number 135. You can have a look. Question number nine, page number 135. Uh, question number 10, page number 135, nine and 10. We can also practice these two questions. Uh, Yes, you have uh, these two questions to practice. I think that's that's all for this class. All right. So, any question? No question. No questions. All clear. So we stop here. So now I'll see you uh, Friday morning, eight thirty. A uh, student, do you have class Friday afternoon? Do you study Friday afternoon?